Hello YouTube, the Abacanist Eric here. Um, I wanted to talk today a bit about just uh, some observations, uh, pointing out some differences about my time in England. Uh, and this will serve as a um, uh, my VR to uh, Snuff Begins Ben. Um, he wants to know, uh, I think mostly for any sort of non-British people, like what are your preconceptions about England or what do you think about our country? Um, of England and uh, or those who are from England what do you think about your own country now I happened to live there for five years um, between 2008 and 2013 uh, and I lived in Nottingham England for um, for, the, for all of that time um, and got out and got to see uh, a, a fair amount of uh, other parts of England um, didn't travel extensively but uh, went to a good handful of places So I sort of sit somewhere in the middle. Um, so mostly what will follow is just brief observations about differences, um, uh, some of which come from uh, just travels, experiences, but also um, there's a book called Divided by a Common Language, which is really helpful for us when we first moved there. Uh, and this uh, and that points out lots of different uh, words and phrases used that uh, British English users use uh, versus um, North American. Um, first thing you do, you get there, and um, someone says hello to you, but they'll probably say, "Y'all right, y'all right, uh, y'all right." Um, we'll catch somebody like me off guard or anybody from the states because they'll think, "Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm doing." I'm, I'm all right. Was there something wrong? Do I have some mustard on my nose? Um, just means hello. What's up? How you doing? I mean, it's sort of similar to when Americans, when North Americans say "What's up," and they'll just sit, reply and say "Sup." They won't actually tell you what's going on. Or, anyways, um, or if you're in Nottingham or in the Midlands, maybe like decades ago, people will say "Hey up," although you will actually hear that. Um, uh, one sort of stereotypical phrase from the East Midlands is "Ayo me doc," which is basically the California equivalent of "Sup, dude." Um, yeah, they call. I mean, everybody is pretty much familiar with uh, how the British will say um, "love." So, how's it going, love? Um, or "me love," but uh, in the Midlands they'll say "duck," and this is still very commonly used today. Um, instead of like, thanks, friend, or thanks, mate, uh, when you buy something um, in a market, you'll often hear, ta, duck. So, um, even the guys call it their guys duck sometimes. Just a Midlands, East Midlands thing. Um, I really miss the public transportation there. The Most of the cities are centrally designed. Um, there's pretty much always a high road or many high roads so you would live close to one and just it would be a few minutes, ten minutes at most walk to get to your fruit and veg. Yeah, they say veg instead of uh, vegetables. Um, and uh, whereas, and so it's a bit more pedestrian um, than, I mean that in the walking, not in the boring connotation. Um, it's a bit more of a, a pedestrian society. Most of Europe is, um, and that's another discussion whether or not the England is part of Europe. But um, whereas here, you got to drive 17 minutes to get to anywhere. I know it's 17 minutes, but um, so I know I put on some weight since we moved back. I'm also lazy. Um, public healthcare, the NHS. Um, Man, that was so easy to sign up for when we got there. Filled out a half size sheet of paper, call it like A5. It's basically like 8.5 by 11 folded in half. It's, their A4 is not quite 8.5 by 11. Um, we had healthcare. Uh, it just took, it, took us like a minute or two to fill it out and we were in. Um, yeah, I mean, pay council tax, but man, that was so much easier. We just signed up for Covered California. It wasn't as bad as everybody's saying. 
There were some glitches, but we figured it out. But man, it would be so much easier if it was just like that. Um, now I will say um, that, and I've talked to a good handful of uh, English people about their healthcare system, just what their opinions were in general, and pretty much everybody um, said that they they would not give it up at all. Um, and most would say things like it's either broken, needs fixing, or it's not perfect, it needs fixing. Um, I mean, obviously, everybody knows the Scandinavian countries are much better. But um, it was it was much improved. And I know this this is sort of can open a whole can of worms, a um, whole different debate these days, especially. Um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was that was such like an easy thing to sign up for and uh and they'd figure that out um quite a while ago so um now a few things about different words this is just sort of like a funny thing uh when you arrive if it's raining don't say that your pants got wet people will think you have wet your underwear uh you should probably remind yourself that they are referred to as trousers um, and now, granted, most of them, most of the British watch American TV, you know that we call them, we call trousers pants, so, uh, and especially if they hear somebody in an American accent saying that, they'll probably won't, uh, blush too much, but what might make Ben blush, and I'm sorry, and this might make it a bit, uh, more rated 15, uh, um, is tourists, especially North Americans, like to wear something that the British call bum bags. We do not call them bum bags, even though that is a hilarious term. Sorry, Ben, but yeah, we do call them fanny packs, and that's ridiculous. Because if you don't know, don't ever... And I'm saying this to you North Americans, fellow North Americans, do not say that word, fanny, when you're there in England. It is a derogatory term for a vagina. Um, sorry if I made you blush, Ben. Um, so that's one to definitely be aware of. Um, there's other stuff like they call, um, uh, they call eggplants aubergine, which is actually the French word. They call, um, zucchinis courgettes. And there's a whole, like, list. Corn is sweet corn. Um, there's all, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, where that divided by a common language book would be really helpful if you ever just need to pick up some groceries. Um, general attitude, not attitude, but like demeanor, the way of life, the way of approach maybe, one, the way that one comports oneself over there. So Americans, North Americans, tend to be direct to a fault, I would say. Uh, by and large, and I think this is fair, the British are more indirect to a fault. Um, stiff upper lip and all that. Um, now, obviously Americans, the, to the fault part, can be uh, a bit brash, abrasive, way too in your face. Um, that's probably, I would imagine, the stereotype of, of many North Americans. Um, but the indirect part of, or the indirect aspect of British culture is definitely takes some getting used to to navigate. Um, it is awesome for their sense of humor, though. Um, the British sense of humor is absolutely hilarious. Um, the way that they take the piss out of themselves um, is I, we, we miss that quite a bit um, uh, forming friendships I would say t it took us a bit longer than we had expected because of trying to navigate that however once we made friends we made very good friends um, so um, I mean I wouldn't say in general that would be a hindrance to uh, forming friendships over there but um, it it, it does affect office culture in a certain way that surprised my wife. Um, 
Now my PhD supervisor was from Belfast, so as an Ulsterman, he was actually <laughs> uh, a bit more direct than like even I was used to, but. Um, and then lastly, something I miss, uh, as like a thing I miss, uh, in, in uh, England is, um, something we don't really do here unless it's basically an homage to something British, which is the public house. Uh, now we have British pubs, um, many of them are a bit schlocky and gimmicky. Uh, there is one here in Sacramento called Bon Lair, which is awesome though. It's about as authentic as you can get uh, but the public house a place not just it's not just a bar the it's a place where they will always serve food um, they will have a wonderful usually a sele wonderful selection of uh, cask ales hand pump cask ales um, a good rotation of them um, and I have spent countless hours uh, with friends, uh, by myself studying, um, with my colleagues, having conversations, a, a pint, a pipe, and theology. Um, we used to meet uh, uh, fortnightly. That's another great word that the British are keeping alive. We would meet, we would meet fortnightly. Um, sort of an inkling style meeting. Um, but here, generally, there's mostly bars. Um, they don't, you know, pubs tend to be family tend to be family friendly. Um, bars are a bit more. Um, they're just more about. They're thought about more. Of, they're thought to be more like places where you just get a drink uh, and or just meet people to establish relationships. Um, worst case scenario, hook up. Um, not that that doesn't happen at pubs per se, but. Um, in general, that's not really the vibe you get. So, I have gone on long enough. Um, I think uh, that will sort of serve as my thoughts for now. Um, uh, those are sort of the things I miss. Now, most of all, I miss our wonderful friends that we made in England. Uh, I miss Nottingham quite a bit. I miss my colleagues there, uh, my department. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we will hope to visit in the next couple of years if we can. Um, but yeah, you should definitely, yeah, if you visit England, yeah, yes, see London. Yes. But you know, you've got to check out, it's like the Peace, Peak District, Lake District, um, the East Midlands, uh, Ben, if you're ever uh, in Nottingham, check out Yield Trip to Jerusalem. Uh, I think it's the oldest pub oldest inn in England, formed in 1189. Uh, half of it's uh, in a cave. Uh, pretty cool. So uh, thank you, Ben, and uh, thank you all for watching. Cheers.